Welcome back everyone. When we think of abuse, children often come to mind, but kids aren't the only ones who can suffer. And we are talking about elder abuse this morning and joining us live in our studio is Jean Peters to my immediate left. She's the vice president of Elder Voice Family Advocates and to her left is Erin Parrish with AARP of Minnesota. Thank you both for being here this morning. You know, it's something that I won't say it's hard to imagine because we know what happens. We've done stories on it. But for those who might be watching or listening at home, what are some of the warning signs of elder abuse? Well, it's subtle, isn't it? Yes. yes. It is very subtle. And um, uh, I would like to say that it's more like you can't really see it, but you perceive um, something's not right. And we think about it in, um, and in our family's case, in the care facility my mom was at. Uh, she com said, you know, that person isn't nice to me and we noticed meals weren't being delivered and she wasn't being taken to uh, activities that we'd signed up and paid for so you have a, a sense that things aren't right and so when we talk about elder abuse do you find that it's happening in nursing homes and assisted living facilities more than in private family homes i think we know that there's research showing that uh, a majority of abuse does happen in the home however uh, the abuse is happening in assisted living facilities and long-term care residential facilities. So in 2016, 25,000 elder abuse reports were uh, filed with the Minnesota Department of Health. And uh, a number of them went uninvestigated and abusers were largely unpunished. Uh, fortunately, the Minnesota Department of Health has done a lot to address that backlog. Uh, yet they continue to receive about 400 cases on average every week. So we do know it's not a rare problem for it to be happening in long-term care residential facilities. And when we talk about abuse, we're not just talking about physical harm. You Correct. said meals missed, perhaps not changing someone's bedding, not changing their diaper or if, if they depend on that. Right, leaving them you know, uh, self-neglect, uh, yeah. you know, leaving someone on the floor unattended. What are you doing to change elder abuse? Oh, well, we're working really hard, um, uh, Elder Voice Family Advocates and AARP together to change, we've got to change some laws. Did you know Minnesota is the only state that does not license their assisted living facilities? We've got to change that and we're working hard uh, to protect the consumer, to protect these individual rights. Um, of those living uh, in long-term care facilities. And I know with AARP you do a lot to try to push legislation and you also recognize folks like Jean. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, so uh, each year AARP recognizes uh, an outstanding individual who is using their skills, talent, and experience to uh, enrich the lives of others with uh, our Andrus Award. And this year we are recognizing Jean for her tireless advocacy efforts on behalf of vulnerable and older adults in Minnesota. She really saw a problem and set out to reform the law and support others going through a similar situation. Well, kudos to you, Jean. Thanks. Kudos to you both for trying to find solutions. And thank you for being with me thank this you. morning. Now, of course, if you want more information on this topic, we will have it all on our website after the show. When we come back, we've got much more for you. Stick around.